moods and updates, and there is a lot of chaos and revolved around Sim Update 9, and we're going to talk about some of the goods and some of the bads. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, so right out of the gate, let's get some of the obvious things out of the way. Um, unfortunately, it seems as though Sim Update 9, honestly, um, was a wreck. Uh, this has not been a good update at all. Um, initially, we were excited. There was quite a few changes that we thought were pretty cool. You know, at least I did. Um, and then the more I tried to use things, the more things were broken. Um, they really smashed a lot. Um, the performance of the overall simulator right now is just absolutely garbage. Right now, what you're seeing is a simulator running for me in safe mode because the only way that I could get it to stay stable. So that is all mods removed. And mind you that I'm using a community folder trying to launch it in normal mode with nothing in it. My community folder is empty, which means it's the marketplace that's likely broken. Um, so there are some really major issues with the simulator and... I understand, you know, as always, the aspect of you can't test everything. But uh, in my personal opinion, these are things that I don't know how they were missed. Um, I am reading comments and forums and and uh, complaints on the on the Discord channel, all across the board on YouTube as well, um, of people who are just crashing to desktop left and right, having just a horrendous time with Sim Update Nine. So once again, unfortunately, I'm going to call out Osobo and Microsoft on this one and uh, just say this was this was a really bad experience. This is not good. Um, now, let's talk about what has been said about that. Um, there was a live stream with the Osobo development team that said that they are very aware of the uh, the frustration and the uh, uh, displeasure level of the community and uh, said they are working on a um, experience now. I have no idea what that means. I have not seen any direct um, uh, comments to state that there is a hot fix coming. The only thing that has been specifically mentioned was the screen flickering issue that is uh, affecting both Xbox and PC users. Uh, they have said that they're working on a patch for that. However, my biggest issue here is that the very building blocks of what makes these simulators roll, it does not matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you are prepared uh, 3D, if you are X-Plane 11, or if you're Microsoft Flight Simulator at this point, your third-party developers are what make the simulator. I don't care what ego boost people think they have, uh, these developers have, but it's the third party developers that make the community. It's the third party developers that make the simulator. It's the third party developers that are making these aircraft and the modifications and the scenery and the cool tools that we use. That's what makes the Sims great. What you guys, you know, as a developer of the simulator do is you make a platform for those. And, and, in my humble opinion, I feel like Microsoft Flight Simulator is the first one to truly let down that part of the community. Um, they are not focusing on the third-party developers and their ability to make your simulator great. Uh, they are focusing on their own stuff and thinking that, you know, as unfortunately Microsoft in general, in my opinion, typically does, they're deciding what's best and what's not and, and focusing on their own internal products versus... Um, making money based on the efforts of others. I mean, that's the thing. It's free money for them. So anyway, that's that's the rant over on that. Um, as far as Sim Update 9, um, it is in shambles. There is a lot of broken things. We're going to talk about some things that have been updated today. Um, and then uh, Sim Update 10 is planned for July, which... Quite frankly, I don't know whether to be excited about it or not, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refrain from going on another rant, but we do know that Sim Update 10 is plotted for July, so we got two months uh, until we see another major Sim update, and hopefully that is something that uh, is a welcomed update, and hopefully the developers learn a few things from Sim Update 9, and quite frankly, Sim Update 5. Sim Update 5 was another really bad one. It, what I'm noticing is... It seems to be about every other update that just absolutely blows the sim to pieces. And it really gets frustrating. So I do understand that. Um, on some cool news now, let's get on to some of the cooler stuff here. 
Um, now there is no release date. There is no release plot. Um, uh, but we do know that, um, um, there is a team that is working on possibly building the AN 225, um, for Microsoft flight simulator. This was announced a little while back that the, that the plans to create the aircraft was something that was going to be put in motion. Um, however, um, the end goal, uh, or the end date is not set. We don't have any further development news on it, but I just thought that'd be kind of a neat thing to uh, bring up because of the, especially since the fact that they're hoping that most of the proceeds from the uh, development of the AN-225 will go to actually restoring the real aircraft. As we, as many of you may or may not know, the, uh, tr the uh, real last standing AN-225 uh, was destroyed in Ukraine. Uh, it was, a really sad thing because there was no reason for that aircraft to be targeted. But anyway, I digress. We won't get into that. But anyway, so hopefully uh, that is something that we will hear more news on. Cross your fingers on that. Uh, I think it's a really noble project. I think it's something really neat. Uh, definitely a very iconic piece of aviation history that I'd like to see restored. So I'm hoping that comes down the line. I really am. Um, okay, so now moving on to some of the more cooler stuff that we have coming down the line here. Um, let's talk about some new aircraft that are coming. All right, so first off, we have a new developer that has joined the platform. We have developer Coxper is bringing uh, the Aeroproct, I hope I said that right, A22 Foxbat to MSFS. Um, this is from FS Elite site. Once again, these guys are absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend you guys check out fselite.net. You guys, they are great uh, with uh, news information or just keep watching my channel. Um, but anyway, so a few days ago, um, they were contacted by the new developer called Coxper, who uh, introduced the uh, prospect of the Aeroproct A-22 Foxbat. So we're getting another general aviation aircraft, which I'm honestly, I'm all for, um, especially if we can find something that's more highly developed. Uh, we are looking at a price of about 14.99 euros. Um, so really not bad. Again, meeting with the rest of the market. My biggest thing is, you know, um, we... Uh, uh, get some realism with the aircraft and according to the article here that's exactly what we can expect here you see the flight dynamics are also on par with the real thing making exciting fun and delicate ultralight uh, to fly in microsoft flight simulator the ultralights are really freaking cool you know it was so funny because i never really gave them a shot until we joined uh with microsoft flight simulator i think microsoft flight simulator was the first time that i ever tried an ultralight in uh, uh flight simulation uh, I just, I was always thinking, you know, to the, to the higher aircraft, you know, always looking to, you know, the big 737s, the A320, 747, et cetera, right? Now, always going large. And then Microsoft Flight Simulator sort of shifted gears down into the more general aviation and then more into the sightseeing. And I think that is what uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator really shines at. I think where Microsoft Flight Simulator truly beats X-Plane 11 prepared is the scenery. I'm going to be very, very blunt that if it wasn't for that satellite imagery, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator would have died in its infancy. But that scenery brings a whole new um, realism and enjoyment to general aviation flight because you can actually fly around and see areas as they are in the real world that you may not normally get to experience. Now, obviously, not all the terrain is high quality. You know, you have there's plenty of deformation, you know, in, in a lot of the terrain, but you get the general idea. You're still seeing a satellite imagery. You're still seeing a real picture of what's around the area. And uh, so seeing another ultralight aircraft uh, or general aviation aircraft, either or coming to the simulator is actually a really pleasant surprise to me. I'm really digging the very open cockpit that you can see here. Um, this is really, really nice. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the, uh, field of view is going to be uh, very, very cool to have available. I want to know what this little guy right here in the back is. That's very interesting. Is that uh, to prevent a tail strike, I wonder? or I'm not sure. But um, anyway, so 14.99 euros, absolutely not a bad price for an aircraft like this. I think that's more than um, um, fair for you know a high quality aircraft um, and definitely keeps in par with uh, the expectations of the simulator. We got a few other shots of the interior here. Um, so, you know, very simple. Again, it's an ultralight, not a whole lot to the aircraft, but still has a range of 680 nautical miles. That's actually quite a distance. See, where was that? There we go, right there. Uh, that's a pretty good flight for an ultralight. I mean, that's not bad at all. Um, so anyway, 
Uh, the aircraft weighs just under 260 uh, kilograms and uh, comes in a kit of 152 pieces. So this is a real aircraft. I couldn't even imagine buying a kit airplane. I mean, it just that's just so weird. You know, you, you think about putting a model together. No, no, no. I'm going to put an airplane together. You know, it's cool. You know, I got time. Got room in the garage. Let's go for it. Anyway, so really cool news. It's nice to see another developer hit the table. Uh, the more developers, the better. Um, so once again, very, very cool news. Next up on the list, as many of you have probably experienced by now, the DC Designs Concord was smashed with Sim Update 9. Um, and that is obviously a very frustrating experience for both the end users and likely the developer. Uh, there is a note here that the developer um, put a very stern note into the Asobo uh, developers and how basically expressing his displeasure in the latest sim update and on that aspect as i said earlier i completely agree um the uh development team from asobo do not seem to be paying any attention whatsoever really to third-party developers uh they're just they're really not uh, keeping them in mind every single sim update we get breaks hundreds of mods and add-ons um, and uh, just puts the community in an uproar because those mods and add-ons and tools as I said earlier are what make the sim great it is not Microsoft Flight Simulator that makes Microsoft Flight Simulator amazing it is everything that the community contributes to it that brings it to an amazing point like I said before my my honest opinion is what makes Microsoft Flight Simulator amazing and the only thing that keeps I think the majority of people coming back to it is the scenery I think if it wasn't for the scenery and wasn't for the graphics engine Microsoft Flight Simulator would have died and this is another perfect example so um, although I have my own opinions when it comes to the particular developer um, I do stand by him with the comment um, that uh, once again it is up to the community to fix the problems that were introduced that probably couldn't have been avoided especially if at the very least Microsoft Flight Simulator was pushing out these updates to the developers first to give them a chance before breaking thousands you know of, of users experience so um, it, it does sound like however the DC Designs uh, Concord uh, did receive a um, fix for it and that they are pushing it out to both just flight and the sim market to hopefully get into the end user's hands as quickly as possible so massive props on dc designs for pushing out a fix very very quickly for this new aircraft i know the concourse is seeing a lot of attention lately and that's a wonderful thing uh, i don't have any problem with that whatsoever so um, i am pleased to see that the fix for it has already been pushed out and then hopefully you as the end users will be able to enjoy your uh, supersonic uh, cruising experience here all right, so now we're going to start talking about some updates to add-ons and mods that have been um, updated and brought up to the standard necessary in order to operate with Sim Update 9. Now, with that being said, I want to make sure that I throw this disclaimer out, guys, that, again, I am seeing crash to desktops in every single flight that I am taking anytime I am not in safe mode. Uh, what you're seeing behind us is actually the longest that I've seen the simulator running stable um, since the update to uh, update nine. So keep that in mind as I talk about the updates. Uh, they are supposed to be supporting sim update nine, but I do believe there are bigger, is bigger issues going on that are outside of that. Um, I'm willing to bet that the ma majority of the problem is not with the mods and add-ons. I believe it is based on what I'm currently seeing. I think it's with the sim market downloads. Um, so just keep that in mind. So this is an aircraft that is getting ready to hit the channel here in a couple of days. Um, very, very awesome stuff. These guys are moving very quick to uh, keep this aircraft up to date. As I said, I'm super pleased with the effort these guys are doing. One thing that I wanted to make sure that I pointed out with this particular update is to make sure that you remove any previous versions of this aircraft before you install the latest download. It says recommended is a clean install. So you guys have the black and white right there, so make sure that you guys take care of it. But the first line is an SU-9 compatibility fix, uh, as well as the fly-by-wire 0.75 integration. So fantastic work again this is a very very cool aircraft it's fun to fly one of the bigger jets it's becoming more and more feature rich and these guys are really taking a lot of time to download or uh, to uh, in get this aircraft um, up and running so Next up on our list here is the Savage Gravel Monster Truck in the Skies was also updated, again, reflecting compatibility for Sim Update 9. Um, you guys can see that it has been tested and verified right here. So very awesome stuff. And again, some other, uh, the uh, computational fuel, fluid dynamics has now been added to the aircraft, as well as a couple other minor changes to the aircraft. But again, uh, the Got Gravel um, 
monsters themselves are kicking tail and, and turn names and all that good jazz uh, with their aircraft releases. So if you guys haven't tried this one out, this is another very, very fun Stoll aircraft. Sticking with Got Gravel for a moment, we have the Monster NX Cub was also updated, reflecting a compatibility with Sim Update 9. So if those of you who love that aircraft, again, same changes that we saw with the Savage Gravel, uh, which is um, very, very nice to see. Again, uh, this, is, this is another uh, developer that just absolutely sets the bar. And on, in my opinion, he sets the bar for payware because he offers freeware quality or freeware aircraft at payware quality. Um, these aircraft that he puts out are fantastic they're wonderfully fun planes to fly they have great flight models they are exciting they're challenging they offer um, some really great uh, immersion with the aircraft and the development that has been done on them so once again the monster nx cub has also been updated reflecting compatibility with sim update 9 discussing is the hype performance group h135 this is their free helicopter version guys so you have the h145 which is pay where the h135 is a freeware helicopter and again Another group that sets the bar high for payware quality because you have a freeware quality aircraft that is absolutely amazing. It doesn't require anything else to run with it. Uh, it is a natively flown uh, helicopter. You don't need to have, you know, uh, Airland FS or anything like that going with it. Um, and it works perfectly fine. We have compatibility with Sim Update 9. And again, reflecting the change log here, you have a few other minor changes that has been added to the aircraft. But again, uh, absolutely wonderful experience. Wonderful experience. Now, for me, the H145 still takes the pie and the cake at the same time, only because of the fact that, uh, A, you have the action pack that is now getting uh, in development for the H145. And I do find the H145 to be a slightly better uh experience as far as flying the aircraft i do enjoy it quite a bit better however that is not to say that i think if you are someone who has never flown the h145 you're going to fly the 135 and you're not going to have any problems with it and you're not going to know the difference uh i think if there is a difference between the two flight models guys it's got to be i mean it could be placebo i could be just saying oh yeah the h145 is better because great you know <laughs> so you know i could be talking on my back end you know and just making things up at this point when it comes to these two helicopters um, I followed the H-135 development on from its very in, um, beginning stages all the way up to where it is now, and it has been a marvel of, uh, of development for Microsoft Flight Simulator. They took a, uh, I think this was really our first helicopter to hit the simulator, um, and uh, for a simulator that doesn't actually support helicopters yet. Uh, which is another thing that uh, we could talk about some other time. You guys can tell I'm I'm, I'm Asobo and Microsoft are, are kind of on my on my S list right now. That they're, they're they're in the dumpster for me right now. But you know, in a day or two, I'll get over my crap. Um, but uh, anyways, um, so again, another very very great marvel that was brought to the simulator. And uh, if you guys have not checked this one out, I highly recommend it. You guys will definitely, definitely enjoy the helicopter experience. It's got all the neat stuff, and it's got a great navigation system. All the bells and whistles, whistles, whistles flies beautifully. Uh, the texturing and the modeling and the sounds are wonderful on this aircraft. It's just, it is a great time. And then you have hundreds of liveries, if not thousands at this point, that you can find here on FlightSim.2 for this helicopter that uh, increase it even more. You know, I mean, you can really take it to a whole new level. I know that NeoFly uh, at this point supports, I think, the H-135 and the 145, so you can even do some NeoFly missions uh, in the two helicopters, so it's really based on uh, what your preference is. But again, um, the developers are working hard, guys. You can tell that um, there's a lot of frustration, especially amongst, I think, the developers based on uh, comments that I've seen and following various discords and things like that. So uh, the developers are working, guys. They're, they're, you can tell that they're fighting really hard to get, uh, get you your favorite tools, add-ons, and aircraft and liveries back up and running. Um, it sounds like there were some pretty significant changes that nobody was aware that was coming uh, with Sim Update 9, and that's why we're seeing a lot of things in shambles and broken. Um, I am also working on uh, trying to troubleshoot all of the performance issues. So as soon as I come down to some concrete resolutions, if I do get some concrete resolutions, I will definitely be sharing them on the channel. So stay close with me, guys, and uh, I'll do what I can to help from here. As always, guys, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.